Napoleon Bonaparte and his army de Orient are faced with a difficult task, conquest of Egypt and a march to India. Once in India, they will join forces with Tipu Sultan, the tiger of My Mysore, and drive the, heat the hated English into the sea. Such is the grandeur and the scheme. And in General Napoleon, Napoleon Bonaparte, there is a commander of equal grandeur to undertake it. Comrade Guy, what's up, brother? He says, go Ragnarok, slay him, queen. <laughs> uh, yes, indeed. Before this can be achieved, however, there are more immediate obstacles. Egypt is ruled by the Mamelukes, who are no uh, nominally loyal servants of the Ottoman Empire. In the burning heat of the desert, Frenchmen must march on Alexandria and break their power before anything else can be achieved. But here, in this land of the ancient secrets, there is glory to be won. Glory enough for France and glory enough possibly for General Bonaparte. All right, guys, we are playing Napoleon Total War, we're doing the Egyptian campaign, 1798 to 1800. Should be a good fun. I've been wanting to play this campaign for quite a while, actually. I've been I've been putting it off, but I decided to wait no longer. Um, while we go through this, if there's time, I have um, a little book here called The Keys of Egypt, The Obsession to Decipher Egyptian Hieroglyphs by Leslie and Roy Atkins. So um, it's essentially the story of how the hieroglyphs were deciphered. Um, obviously, we won't be able to get too far into it, but I'm, I'm interested to read a little bit of it for you guys to see if we can spark some interest in um, the story of the hieroglyphs. But let's crack on. Let's get into this campaign. Hope everyone's well. Hope everyone's having a good time. It's an age of exploration, of conquest everywhere. Frenchmen traveled the world teaching, learning, trading. Always the British were threat. Their merchants took the best. Their ships strangled our trade. As Britain grew wealthy, France suffered. In the heat of summer, Napoleon landed in Egypt. Now, the East and its wealth would be ours. Egypt. Here, the sands whisper stories of ancient victories and glories. Here, Napoleon felt the history of 40 centuries upon his shoulders. What I have done up to now is nothing, he said. But the desert is harsh and forgiving. Bravery alone. That's something I miss in the, the newer Total Wars and Warhammer is the introductory scenes and the uh, victory scenes. I think it's a nice little touch. <laughs> Comrade Guy says, Vive la Revolution! Vive la France! I think this campaign is basically this is Total War. We're at war with everyone. So, to successfully stall their advance, you must capture each of them. Whilst the Ottoman military presence is not particularly strong in the Levant, be on your guard, as the High Port will surely send reinforcements from Anatolia and Greece. These elite troops are trained in the European style of warfare, and are known as the nizam e sedit To make matters worse, the British have sent one of their most capable admirals, Horatio Nelson, to the eastern Mediterranean to block your escape routes. No French supplies or reinforcements can arrive while the British naval base on Cyprus is active. And remember that your enemies can not only attack you by land, but also by sea. Make sure all your newly acquired towns and cities are well defended so that there are no nasty surprises to check French progress in the region. Mm -hmm. All right, it's going to be it's going to be a tough campaign, but we'll we'll do what we can. Description uh capture city Cairo. All right, sounds good. Comrade guy says Oh, I got in a new badge. Haha, four more months till the next one. Is it four more months until the next one? Is that how it works? Goodness gracious. 
All right. Got quite a bit of treasury to work with to start off. We've got uh, Louis Charles here. Thought we started with um. Thought we started with some ships, but I guess we don't. We've got a couple agents. This guy, what can this guy do? Guess we'll use this guy as our scout. And I believe this one. Uh, Comrade says it's a new badge, one month to 12 to 6 months, um, and then 24 months. Oh. New badge, one month, two months, six months, 12 months, and then 24 months. Ah, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I'm going to keep the badges as they are or if I'm going to change them up because they're um, they're the moxes from Magic the Gathering. If you've ever played Magic the Gathering, which I'm a huge fan of and will play some Magic on the channel at some point, but um, that's what they're based on. Uh, so yours, your current... Um, uh, Mox is the Mox Jet, which is uh, for the uh, for the black mana. But the the Moxes, and then the final the final badge is the Black Lotus, which is the most uh, revered card in all of Magic: The Gathering. Ooh, look at this! We got lots of artillery, six pound, lots of six pound guns. Good, nice little army to start off with. Fusiliers of the Line, okay, and we've got some Grenadiers as well. Interesting. Comrade guy says never really played it, but I collected cards like 15 years ago. Yeah, I I used to be fairly big into it, but I, I I go in phases. I've got a pretty pretty substantial collection here. None of the moxes, unfortunately. I wish. Um, should we build any naval ships? What can we recruit for? Let's. Man, I'm all over the place here. Could definitely use some some cavalry I find the cavalry really useful in these uh, in these campaigns but we'll have to attack this settlement down here in the desert as well comrade guy says it's actually a goal of mine to one day buy the black lotus just to own a copy that would be awesome dude that would be freaking awesome all right well Let's send this guy into into the settlement here. I think he I think he unlocks. Can we even get to this settlement? Oh, we've got to come down here. We've got to cross the river. I don't think we can actually get to this settlement. And it seems it's quicker to go this way. Oh wait, not. Oh, we've got some army here. Bonaparte, uh, because of the artillery, I guess he doesn't have quite enough room to get there this turn. Well, let's come down and take this settlement. And we'll bring reinforcements. A lot of cities. Mamelukes. Mamluks. Oh, this is Mamluks territory. What about this down here? Bedouin. Yeah, it appears we've got a lot of territory to um to take. Actually, I don't like him when he's moving fast. Hmm. I guess we could have taken this this turn too. Be nice. Let's get an idea what's over here, actually. Alright, we probably could easily auto-resolve this. Nine pound guns. What's the range on these? Range 520, 450. So they outrange us. We demand their surrender. Did they surrender? Oh shit! I shouldn't have done that because that peacefully occupied. Uh, we could have gotten rid of this army, but I guess 
Though, um, this guy can catch up to them. We'll get rid of them this way. Comrades guy says, uh, Ragnarok, just like old times, surrounded from all sides by enemies standing back to back as we fight for freedom of our people. Yeah, that, that seems to be a uh, common theme of, uh, of my campaigns, is surrounded on all sides and fighting back to back. Yep. Only difference is this this <laughs> this scenario. This is how we started off. It's uh, usually it takes me a little while to get into a situation like this. All right. Um. Hmm. Let's uh, let's try and hide from their um, their artillery here, and stand over here too. And cavalry, let's have you stand over here and try and get around and behind them. Morin says, hi Reggie, how are you doing? Long time no see. Morin, good to see you, buddy. I'm doing all right. I had um, family visiting uh, family visiting uh, over the last week and a half, so I've been spending some time with them and just uh, just enjoying the, uh, the family time. They're visiting from Nova Scotia, so um, it's good to see them. And had a good, uh, good. I guess I guess it's about two weeks now. Osmond says hi. What's up, Osmond? Good to see you, man. But how uh, how are you doing, Morn and Osmond? How are you doing? Got more more Napoleon Total War. I don't know. We'll see how this goes. I the controls the controls kill me in this game. Um, I don't know. I don't think these Mamluks have. Can they hit us from there? There's no way they're going to be able to hit us from there. Guys, stay over here. You stay over here. I'd say we waste their ammunition, but um, you have infinite ammo in this, so that's not going to happen. What we got to do is we got to get rid of the the general first, and then we can we can deal with the artillery. Morin says, uh, or comrade guy says, ah, Captain Morin, what's up, brother? Morin says, wouldn't ice cream be nice right now? Would you ice cream flavor? Uh, would you have uh, right now? What flavor uh, would I have right now? I don't know. That's a good question. I am partial. To, I really like soft ice cream. So like a chocolate vanilla swirl is sort of my uh, my go-to. But, um, but the other flavors, I'm a big fan of... Uh, heavenly hash like with the uh, it's got like there we go that's what I'm talking about they go to general um, and, and anything with peanut butter in it too I, I, I like a little bit of ice cream with peanut butter or if I'm going in a completely different direction some mango ice cream Comrade says, ah, ice cream, I found this new brand that I've like barely any calories in it for an entire box. Oh, that's pretty sweet. Don't think they're landing any shots there. No, it looks like everybody's because of the uh, because of the terrain, we should be pretty pretty well insulated from taking any any shots. And once the the general is down. This is the nice thing about the older Total Wars is the how passive the AI is. Uh, it's certainly come a long way. I mean, um, just if these guns turn around and shoot at us, that's not going to be good. They seem perfectly content. Peasant levy. Saw says, uh, Vala Circe, cowboy, what's up, Saw Valon, how are you, brother? Good to see you, man. 
And Comrade Guy says, I don't remember what it's called, but I uh, don't like it that often, but it's delicious. Nothing like good old-fashioned ice cream. This time of the year as well. Um, or at least this time of year in this hemisphere. I think these guys are safe. Take out the cannon now. And then we'll worry about the peasants. The peasants we should be able to charge into. I'm going to want more cavalry units because the cavalry units will be pretty useful. Come on, boys. Show us what you got. Maybe I'm not close enough. Glorious victories, huh? Is soon to be yours. Soon to be ours. Oh shit, that's not good. Let's charge into these peasants. So we took a lot of casualties there, just that those one or two volleys should be able to get rid of them in uh, in combat here it's just a peasant unit there we go uh, let's continue and run them down especially the uh, the artillery forward through this. Alright, we'll finish them off. Alright, suffered 13 casualties, so it could have been worse. One of our units has used all its ammunition, sir. Come on, boys. Decisive victory. The last time we played Napoleon, we got heroic victory all the time. Now we're only getting decisive victory. That's, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that's a sign of things to come. Can you actually get into the settlement? No. All right. What's the public order like? Minus six. Hmm. Well, let's have you move into there. And in the meantime, probably should recruit some troops. Um, these take two turns. And Fusiliers of the Line take two turns. I think we're definitely going to go with the Fusiliers of the Line. We'll get two imp two of those going right away all right what uh, tax office all right let's upgrade that army encampment what do we get from this um, yeah I guess we can upgrade that and then what else can we build here cannon foundry or a theater I think we'll build the cannon foundry And then down here, we'll build the army encampment, and we'll build the magistrate up. And now we're broke. Broke. Uh, I don't want to recruit those. All right. Public order is probably going to be a little bit dicey in this campaign. Oh, whoops. Sorry, as I clicked out of the screen there for a second, by accident. <laughs> yeah, I think we're probably going to need multiple armies moving in, in multiple directions here. Get an army. 
but we're off to a good start. Just wondering if we should build uh, any naval ships because we're going to end up seeing the British come over here and land some troops. More than likely. Can you get back into the settlement? No, not good. Okay. I missed quick there. Okay, yeah, I did quick. Alright, good. Good, good. Alright. How's the public order here? Public order's fine. Oh shit, and we've got... Alright, we'll build the logging camp there. This one we can't afford. Farms. Alright, we're doing a lot of building to start off, get our foundation set. What, uh... National summary. Income next turn, 1900. Alright. And... Just out of curiosity, what is our objective? Nominally administrators of the Ottoman Empire, these former... Okay, victory conditions. This is what I wanted to see. Capture and hold 10 regions, including the regions shown... Oh, in red. Okay. Shown complete by the end of late December 1800. So we've got quite a bit of time to do it. But, um, yeah got lots of work to do all right moving on intellectual centers are the engines of learning and energy. workers on strike the people of this region have down their tools and gone on strike for the cost of their national identity which they feel compassion that of your own how do we end workers strike I missed uh, the advisor on the uh, technology. Basic roads, probably not a bad idea. And then let's build this up as well. This stuff built. Sure. Lots of fusiliers in the line. Um, hmm. All right. We head south to Cairo right away. I think we go for these southern provinces. Monsieur? But we do need to um, hmm, leave some defenses behind. Actually, we hit this first. Get an idea of what sort of forces are out here. Yeah, do we go straight for Cairo or do we do we take uh, maybe I, I feel like we'll go straight for Cairo first. Not worry about them. Now what I want to do we do need to leave some defense. Um Oh. Alright, we'll leave one general behind. Leave him behind, actually. Uh, minus three. We need to leave some... Some units behind as well. Alright, there, that should be good. Uh, for our public order. And then this guy... This guy can command the cavalry even though it's only small right now, but we'll hopefully, hopefully get this a little bit bigger. We do have Dragoons as well. But I guess we'll keep them together for now. 
down here and hit this. Maybe shouldn't have kept this actually. Guys, just stand there. That way we can get a little bit of replenishment on that unit. It's not a lot, but try and get our units to last if we can. Yeah, a lot of terrain to cover. A lot of terrain to cover. So he stay put. He'll stay put there, and then we've got additional troops, and maybe he can push into the east. We might want to wait until our cannon foundry is ready and he can recruit some yeah some troops that way all right hit the end turn man with how fast these end turns go by i don't know if we're gonna have time to read any uh any philosophic stuff all right so our new troops are recruited we can't even Cavalry can make it there. Pop the cavalry in there. Yeah, I'll just keep pumping out the fusiliers of the line. Actually, let's get one one cavalry unit, and then we should be able to start recruiting some some artillery soon as well. These guys not oh they couldn't even couldn't even quite make it in there. Hmm would be good to get rid of that force. Where did my where did my spy go? An idea what's happening down here. Hmm. Bigger force down here. But we should still be able to take it. How much movement do you have? Hmm. Cairo or smaller target. I think we take... Oh, this is, uh, this, is this province. Mm. Public order is going to be an issue, I have a feeling. Alright, let's take this and then we can take Cairo second. And then we'll use this as our... I want to bring these guys up as well. pound guns this time all right shouldn't be too difficult the artillery back here. Put the 
grenadiers in between to protect them. The light infantry on that flank. And this flank. The line infantry. All right, where are their guns deployed? All right. Deploy the generals back in behind here. And the uh, give the dragoons. The the dragoons are more of a more of a shock cavalry. These guys are more of a light cavalry. And I like the fact that they have guns. The Dragoons don't have guns. Alright. Should be good to go. We'll take out the general. Take out the guns. Shit. Get moving. Hopefully this little hill here will protect us. Gotta get in behind there. Keep going, keep moving, go! Lucky so far. Get around this hill. And we gotta watch out for those stakes. But. Wow, incredibly lucky that none of those shots got through. Now let's see if we can take this uh, take this general out. Come on, shoot, shoot. Come on, shoot. What are you doing? Being outmaneuvered here. There you go. What is he doing? Are they gonna charge us? Oh, it looked like he was gonna charge. Come on, shoot. went pretty well <laughs> all right now mamelukes those could be dangerous but we should be able to get in range of the, the guns here and keep an eye on this situation over here too Not looking good for the our dragoons here. Though these guys are actually performing really, really well, a lot better than I thought they'd perform. Light infantry there. All right, he seems okay. They seem all right.
Alright, just charge in if you're just gonna stand there. Glorious victories, huh? Is soon to be yours. Shit. Oh, pull out. Pull out. We can. We should be able to outrange them. With our guns. And seems to be going pretty well. The dragoons took a fair bit of casualties, but I think they're all right. As a one thing in this in Napoleon Total War is you do end up taking um, taking quite a bit of casualties at times. Cavalry. I don't think I don't think we're gonna win out here. Uh, it's too late. We're already committed to the fight there. Just kind of hoping that we get the army loss or trigger the army loss rather. Son of a bitch! These guys are back. Not quite used to the bigger, uh, bigger battlefields in uh, Napoleon Total War. That it's a bit of a difference compared to some of the newer, newer Total Wars. Some, I think, I think this has some of the biggest battlefields in any Total War. Alright, just finish them off. Actually get out of there. Let the uh Chaussairs deal with it. How are we doing over here? It's like we want out just the uh the numbers, but a lot more casualties than I would have liked. On those guys. They're really they're putting up a fight here. Get out of the way. Let's save the dragoons. We might need them in the next battle. I don't want to use the uh, the light cav will serve their purpose. We need some more line infantry in this army. Yeah, these guys took took some heavy damage too. So we gotta pursue them when they're running off the field. You guys have a little bit better range than the uh, than the line infantry. Makes them a little bit more useful. Uh, they're coming back for another freaking round.
They just do not want to give up. But at least getting them at range is a little bit... A little bit better than having them go toe-to-toe -to -toe with our line. I don't know, maybe my deployment wasn't the best here. Maybe we should have deployed back up here. Alright, why don't we read while this battle finishes off here, why don't we read a little bit of the Keys of Egypt, the Obsession to Decipher Egyptian Hieroglyphs by Lisa and Roy Adkins. The beginning of time. At the house at 28 Rue Mazarin, where Jean-Francois Champollion lived and carried on his research into hieroglyphs, was less than 200 yards from the Institute of France where his brother Jacques Joseph had his office. Towards midday on September 14, 1822, Champollion recovered the distance in the shortest time possible. Clutching his papers, notes, and drawings, he fled along the narrow, gloomy street, around the corner, and into the institute. Not fully recovered from his latest spell of ill health, and at the highest pitch of excitement, he was already breathless as he burst into his brother's office, flung his papers on the desk, and shouted, Je tiens le fer! I've found it! Working since early morning on the latest drawings of inscriptions from Abu Zimbel, he had at least at last seen the system underlying the seemingly unintelligible Egyptian hieroglyphs, and it was now only a matter of time before he would be able to read any hieroglyphic, any hieroglyphic text. He began to explain to Jacques Joseph what he had discovered, but only managed a few words before collapsing unconscious on the floor. For a few moments, his brother feared he was dead. Obviously, he was not. All right. Oh, oh. got our first heroic victory of the campaign. Still, a fair bit of losses, and we've got um, we've got a tougher fight in Cairo coming up. Um. Definitely use these reinforcements in Napoleon's army. Um, I, I might actually, we might actually come up and take some of this uh, since it seems lightly defended. What's our um, next turn? Twenty six hundred, so that's not too bad. And we are recruiting some more troops. All right, let's send you over to uh, catch up. We do need to keep a, a small force in this area because I think I think we'll be attacked by the British at some point. So we've got to keep an eye on that. So, well, I, I mean, I guess this is a small force. What's uh, there? 
let's see um, infrastructure build those roads we got magistrate and we can't afford anything we spent all our cash probably good to build some theaters we get most of well mm hmm We'll be good to recruit from multiple provinces, just in case we need to raise a force really quickly. Plus, re getting our, our army back to full strength. Because the replenishment is not great. So what we maybe might end up doing is merging a lot of the, uh, a lot of the, the infantry and then replacing them with new infantry. I think is a reasonable way to go about it. All right, if we move you out, what's, uh, build that up. Theater. Oh, theater does uh, happiness. But I think, I think I'm gonna stick to my guns and go army encampment so we can get those, those line infantry. Minus six, Scheiser. What if we send you two back, or you three back? Minus four. Mm. Um, oh, whoop. what just happened? Monsieur. Did I just, oh shit, I think I just merged. Damn it, I didn't want to do that. Send you guys back to heal up. Still minus two. We could exempt the region from tax. Income twelve seventy seven. I don't want to do that. Still minus two. Hmm. Well, let's come up and take this. Maybe expanding a little bit too quickly here. Uh, we might be able to get them to demand them surrender. I want to put you in his army as well. Get an idea what's down here. They should surrender. Yeah, we'll peacefully occupy. Ooh. Can't reach. Cannot reach it. Oh shit! These guys can almost reach it. I do want to get them caught up to the army. I don't know, the workers are probably going to end up going on strike there. The ruling class is angry. The ruling class is indifferent. It exempt it from taxes, but I'd rather not. We'll make next turn income is pretty high. 
What do we got for an army up here? Just a small army. Yeah, we'll take all this territory in the north and then we'll push south. Consolidate our forces to some extent and uh, head south. Oh, wait. Let me see here. Uh, it's just balanced. We take one of you out. Still balanced. Ah, but he can't reach. I'll just keep you here. Alright. Good enough. Uh, we'll see what happens, see if they go on strike. Seem to be consolidating their forces down here in the uh, in the south. Burgers on strike. Yeah. Had a feeling had a feeling that would be the case. There we go, that balances it. But obviously we don't want to have to leave that size garrison there. I've got new soldiers recruited. Not sure what I want to do with them yet, where I want to send them. I'm hoping this guy can... Even that cav can... Uh, can reach and reinforce. No artillery this time, so that's good. And let's get you guys into the army. Yeah, getting all this territory in the north sort of sorted away, and then... That means that there's a bit of distance here between us and uh, some of this other territory. It's separated by the desert, so... Defend this, and maybe the northern cities. And then we'll push south and see if we can scoop up all the territory in the south. Oh shit, you know what? Minus six. We got plenty of cash to work with, though. Okay, now let's get you guys moving this way. We'll need more reinforcements over there. Ooh. Um, all right. Get a couple of guns for this guy's army. We'll get another another cavalry unit. Can we? Okay, we can recruit uh, Fusiliers of the Line down here as well. So we'll get a bunch of bunch of troops going. Uh, a little bit of a hill over here, but I don't think that's going to be all that useful. The, uh, the sand dunes make it tricky for deploying the artillery. Let's deploy the artillery back here. you guys up there.
Generals back here. And one cav here for support, and one cav on the other side for support. What they do. Gotta be wary of their cavalry units. Alright. While they figure their, figure out their shit, why don't we read a little bit more from this uh, this history book here. The keys to Egypt. Alright. Perhaps not quite in the way he had always hoped for. This was to prove the most important turning point in Champollion's turbulent life. Through years of ever-increasing preoccupation with hieroglyphs, he had been working towards his, this goal. But his first tentative steps had been made before he had chosen his life's work, and even before he had seen any hieroglyphs, he was drawn to the destiny by an insatiable curiosity about the origins of the world. Early in childhood, apparently neglected by his parents, he was looked after and to some extent spoiled by his brother and three sisters, and they dotted on the bright baby of the family who was so much younger than themselves. Champollion's high intelligence and extraordinary genius for languages were recognized by his brother, who was determined that these gifts should not be wasted. Having had his own schooling curtailed by the terrible upheaval of the French Revolution, Jacques Joseph resolved to minimize its effects on Champollion initially by giving him lessons since all the schools had been shut down. Later, a private tutor was found for the boy, but as a precarious political stability returned under the ascendance of Napoleon, the schools reopened. By the age of 12, Champollion was prodigiously proficient in Latin and Greek, and that he was allowed to begin studying Hebrew, Arabic, Syriac, and Chaldean. Since his knowledge of Latin and Greek had already opened to him a world of books and all manner of subjects, his passion for Oriental languages initially appears a curious caprice on the part of his son, of a rural, rural bookseller, born in the remote town of Fagiets in southern France, uh, in southwest France. In reality, Champollion had already decided to take on one of the great intellectual challenges to investigate the creation of the world and the beginning of time itself. What in the blazes is the uh, AI doing here? They're just uh, in uh, wow, kind of, and they're just out of range for our artillery. It's too bad we don't have uh, our artillery in range while they do this little dance of theirs. Um, I think I'm actually going to bring you over to this side in support. Look like they're moving forward. Looks like, um, hmm, like they're overloading this side, attacking over here. Interesting stuff about Champollion. Um, incredible that he knew Latin and Greek at the age of 12, that he's proficient. Um, you know, knowing how difficult both those languages are. Um, uh, I might fall back with these guys, though they've got this little hill here. Come on. Go, 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 go. I'm gonna try and uh, try and get this guy caught in some crossfire. All right, the guns, guns are firing. Oh shit! Oh, that's not what I want. Not what I want. Come on. Need to take them out before these guys get in range. There we go. Nice. Monsieur. 
Come on, give me another round. They don't uh, respond the greatest to the commands sometimes. Goodness. There we go. There now you're now you're cooking. All right, pull back. And I need you guys to smash into the flank there. And I'm gonna fall back with these guys. Give up that little hill. You guys fall back a little bit here. Let them, uh, let them feel the brunt of our uh, our artillery. Come on, go, 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 go before they get any shots off. Come on, charge him. Don't let them get set. We'll go for the general next, I think. Uh oh, these guys. That's problematic. They're only peasant levies, but... Alright, pull out of there. Here. Oh, that's good news. These guys might get overwhelmed now. You guys fall back. Should finish them off. Guys, don't come back. God, the game is so glitchy. Do you... Oh, you gotta stay put. The occasional glitch here and there. Guys are needed over here. Ooh, shit, 29. Cavalry is good. It's very useful, but um, they're very squishy. They don't, um, especially this light cap. Switch the canister shot. Shit, I don't want these guys getting into my my artillery. Fuck. I don't know how much yeah, it took nine casualties. Dangerous with the generals now, but uh, we have killed their generals, sir. Now they must. Break. All right, good stuff. All right, pull back. Should be it for the casual. That yeah, that should be it for the cavalry here. 
Yeah, I just need to break these guys. Yeah, it's tricky, the deployment. Um, with all the sand dunes and everything, it makes it kind of... Um, kind of tough to decide where to deploy the uh, the artillery. Containing an intellectual center, enabling the research of new technologies. Oh, perfect. Left click on the research button below, or alternatively, press the T key to begin the research process. Bonne chance, mon général. Oh, where's that noise coming from? I don't know what. There we go. It's gone. I don't know what that was. I think we need this guy for the research. Intellectual center. Tax office. Hmm. All right, well, we've got lots of stuff to manage here. Minus six. This one we've got balanced. And we're out of movement here. At least we're getting good replenishment here. Let's, uh, we'll exempt this province from tax. Oh shit, it's still minus two. Might as well tax it then. One's good. All right, we've expanded quite a bit. Looking pretty good. Uh, just a matter of um, public orders, a, a slight issue. And we've we've taken some casualties. Army, just uh, artillery unit. We want to capture this. This will be the last one we want to capture. We'll leave some units behind to get healed up. But I think, uh, and then we're recruiting, recruiting lots more troops. So we want some artillery units for this guy's, this guy's army. Maybe he'll head south. Actually, you know what? Let's get three, even three. Yeah, maybe we we can build army fast enough so that we can um, we can continue east potentially. Yeah, it's going to be tough to do. Probably just focus one direction at a time. But I think consolidating all of these uh, these northern provinces first, I think definitely, definitely paying off. Burger strike again. Yep. What the hell? Though these, oh, okay, build an army encampment here and the magistrate. Build that up. that there instead. Um, hmm. Let's see. Theater's definitely definitely valuable. Um, I'm just wondering if we who we should leave behind here. Minus five. Fuck me sideways. 
Which movement you got? Put you in there for one turn. Wait, 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 wait. And the cavalry there. You can link up with him. And we'll send these infantry over there. I'll almost get it under control. Commercial center. Intellectual center. Oh, this is the intellectual center. All right. This is where we can access the technologies. Research and technology. Do not own any educational building at which you to conduct research. Educational buildings can be constructed in towns. You can steal technologies from other nations. Oh. Oh shit, we have we have to build it. Members club or college. Let's um let's cancel that. What's the difference? Minus one happiness conducts technology research per turn ten points ten. Spawns a gentleman, maximum number plus one. What about member what's the members club? Spawn spies, maximum number plus one. We'll go with uh, we'll build the college. Go with that. Ooh, all right. Next target is uh, a zag a zig zigzag. Huh? I wonder if we can move any of these troops out. Alright, yeah, still good. Get you into the army, you're almost at full strength. Don't think we can move any more out. Let's actually try it though. Yeah. Get you back into the army. The orders calm down there. Minus two. And here it's good. But as soon as we move out with these troops, it's gonna go back to poo. No resistance coming up yet. Mission issued the Suez Canal. Capture city Suez. Long have learned men mused about creating a channel between the Mediterranean and the Red Sea. Not only would it reduce the time needed for ships to travel from India and Africa by half, it would also greatly expand France's influence in the region. Conquering the town of Suez would enable us to pursue this endeavor. A lot of merchants are looking forward to you making this journey, as are our servants. Reward treasury plus 2,000. Suez. Hmm. I guess we could say. Well, I don't know. I'd rather take Cairo first. We're still we're still building up our forces, and taking territory. Just gonna drop a save here. Just in case. I don't know, I know it uh I don't know when the auto save happens for this. Let's keep looking around. What do we got here? It's another small force. So it seems like a they've got a lot of small small forces. Have him come back down because we want to scout down there, get an idea what's happening. 
down there. We've got to watch out the desert because these guys could potentially send troops this way. Maybe that's what we'll have this guy do. Send him down there. But yeah, it would be nice to free up some of these troops. Alright, I think we're good. Um, actually, let me take a look at infrastructure. If there's anywhere. Yeah, basic roads. Roads are important. That's not it. I'd rather get these roads built. That way we can move a lot, a lot more quickly within our city. All right, we've got a nice little ring here of cities. All right, can't quite afford it. All right, let's give you an end the turn. Well, I think they they may have gotten wise to the fact that we're headed for uh, Zagazig next. Need to be sending a lot of their forces in that direction. Burger strike once again. Get a theater built there. Help out with the public order. My post. What is uh, more replenishment? Oh, okay. expensive but I think it'll be be worth it those roads built all right what are we looking at here army plus guys outside and then we've got some more forces over here what's Napoleon's force now uh, we're more or less at full strength. Well, aside the units that are in there anyway. Enough movement to get there. Should be able to handle it. Is there anybody else? Uh, these guys are all replenishing. SHB LOL says hello. How are you doing? How the campaign in, uh, is progressing? Um, not so bad. Good to see you, um, LOL. Um, we've uh, we've taken some territories. We're just kind of we've just gotten started. We've taken we've taken three cities so far. I think we start with these two, and we've taken taken these three cities. We're pushing into this one next, and then probably heading south, going down the Nile, is our likely next course of action. But yeah, victory conditions wise, um, let me take a look here. 
objectives we'll take a look at our victory conditions we need this city and then this city and then these two cities so we still plus another 10 settlements we've got uh five five out of ten and only one out of five of the victory cities but we're just getting started so so far so good the battles have been smooth for the most part trying to keep Napoleon's army Try, trying season. to get um, uh, we can't demand some surrender this time so they do have an artillery piece this time around to get rid of that they've got a lot of uh, a lot more infantry than we do SHBLOL says nice are you going to take the map from the south to north um we'll try I'm gonna try I, uh, these these mini campaigns I always try to to get full map completion but it's tough it's not easy and, and in this one um, it's really difficult because um, the British have an island and we don't have any we don't have any ships um mama 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 mia it's kind of looks good back here Position our artillery back here somewhere, and then use the hill. Ah, uh, shoot! I don't know. I don't know if it's the. They're gonna have the best line of sight. Let's put two of you over here. Actually. Yeah, let's position all of you over here. And our grenadiers on that side. Napoleon, you guys in behind here. Let's drop the uh, the artillery. SHBLL says, yes, it sounds a little tricky to conquer an island without a navy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and the British the British have a, a fairly... I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Nelson is commanding their navy. So, um, like, the, I, the way that I would think to approach it is to try and... Um, try and capture as much territory on the mainland as possible and then um, and then uh, try and capture as many ports as you can and then pump out a navy really really quick and um, send an army to uh, to take the territory try and avoid their navy and um, and take the territory but it's yeah I haven't played this campaign for quite a while actually but I, I like I really actually like these mini campaigns I think they're a lot of fun and it's you don't get that sort of fatigue that you get with those with with a longer. Come on, come on, guys, move! God damn! We get around that artillery and uh, take it out. I don't know. I don't know what's up with my 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 double click, but my double click doesn't seem to uh, doesn't seem to get recognized by the game. Doesn't like my double click. Should be able to. Don't waste any bullets here, boys. Okay, don't shoot while our guys are in there, man. What the hell? 
I don't know, friendly fire is really bad in this game. But, I mean, to be fair, friendly fire in this age of warfare was really bad. So, it's historically accurate, I think. These guys doing? Where is their... Do they have no general? I don't see a general anywhere. You guys move over this way. Just get in position, maybe take out some of these levees on the... Uh, on the edge here. All right. Wait and see what they do. All right, let's read some more of the story of Champollion. So, Although the revolution had outlawed the Catholic Church and suppressed religion, the only model for the origin of the world was still contained in the Old Testament of the Bible, which was believed to be a description of the history of the earth from the time its creation of the of creation by God. It's crazy to think that up until you know, like the 1700s, that was their 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 lone origin, um, you know origin for the earth but anyway uh, scholars preparing to examine this theory had to possess a good knowledge of oriental languages in order to study early versions of the biblical texts and related documents since it was still believed that people lived on on the earth very soon after the world began it was natural to use the tools of history and philology to look for its origin archaeology and ge uh, geology were only in their infancy and yet respectable sciences, or sorry, not yet respectable sciences. Champollion's insatiable curiosity was to tempt him towards various other fields of study on many occasions. But once he became aware of the potential of ancient Egypt, he found the focus for which he was searching. He was gripped by energetic enthusiasm for this mysterious country, a biblical land whose history was interwoven with that of the Israelites. But the history of Egypt, indeed virtually all knowledge of Egypt, was locked away in hieroglyphic, hieroglyphic texts that could not be read, texts uh, not be read, texts that might contain unimaginable secrets, even, even an accurate account of the origin of the world. Here was a challenge worthy of his talents, a prize of untold knowledge, forgotten for centuries if he could only decipher the hieroglyphs. Styrix Shadowwolf is here, what's up Styrix? And Styrix says, someone's trying to take an island with no navy? Hmm, interesting concept. Yes. Oh my goodness. I, what, what is the AI doing? I, you know, I don't, uh, you know, they're doing the old AI shuffle here as, as per usual. SHBLL says, uh, I walked in the middle of a conversation. We moved on to history class. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. I with these older campaigns, especially Napoleon, the battles play out a lot slower than the uh, the battles for the newer Total War. So I figure it's you know an opportunity to uh, to throw in a little uh, a little bit of history. Um, and I mean it fits in with um, the campaign. So this guy Champollion, I believe, becomes a member of um, the. Um, the group of uh, intellectuals that Napoleon brings with him to Egypt. And uh, Steric says, Rag, uh, I do like history. Yeah, it's good stuff. It's a, it's a really interesting book. Um, the Keys of Egypt. Um, the Obsession to Decipher Egyptian Hieroglyphs. So we're just getting a little bit, bit of background story to of, uh, of this, uh, this gentleman, uh, Champollion, the Frenchman who just is able to eventually discern the hieroglyphs. Just wondering if we should read one more paragraph or if we're, we're going to be... A, the, finally, AI is moving forward. So that is, uh, that is one good thing. Um, Got to be careful here not to get caught up. Armed populace. Yeah, th they've got a lot more units than us, but they're, they're of a... Um, their quality is not as, as good as ours. Are you guys uh, ready to fire? Okay. I swear they must be in range. Be 
careful here. Uh, we might be able to get these guys now. Can these two units of cavalry take out these three units of, uh, of infantry? Though... job so far. Really mopping it up there. Don't want to get in front of that uh, that unit there. Not getting shot. Sarek says Napoleon was an interesting character. Yeah, he was a wild man for sure. But yeah, part of the reason why his the the greatest success for for his campaign was the in Egypt was was the the scholars that he brought with and the artifacts and things that he sent back to uh, back to France, back to Europe. Yeah, actually, you know, because at the time too, Egypt was so closed off to Europe that. Um, it was sort of, a, you know, very much a rediscovery of our past, uh, while well, the ancient Egyptians passed. Shit, this guy turned around. Well, we should be able to stay out of his range. But yeah, it was a brilliant move to bring the all of those scholars with him and to record, you know, record everything that they saw. Should maybe stretch this out a little bit more. Oh shit, this guy didn't finish them off. Derek says, you know, he was actually an average height. Yeah, um, average height for the time. Um, I've heard that. But I think the reason, probably the reason why he's thought of to be short is because of his nickname. Um, they called him the Little Corporal. Because he was always, you know, for, for much of his career, he was always in the thick of the fighting, that he was in some of the heaviest fighting where some of the heaviest fighting was. Uh, shit, 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 shit. Got, uh, you guys finished them off. Got a lot of troops coming over this way. Yeah, we, we've got a lot better quality than they do. Try out our uh, our grenades here with the grenadiers. Stark says, "Yeah, for the time." Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think that that's maybe why the you know just his nickname being called the Little Corporal. Um, maybe that's why. Damn it, these fucking grenades! I'm having trouble using them. Are you gonna throw your grenades or what? What are you, what are you doing? Throw the damn grenades! Oh, there we go. And that looks like we uh, we pretty much missed. You guys get over here. In a hurry. SHBLL, interesting figure and an interesting predecessor during the course of history. Yeah, he um, he really shook things up. The status quo in Europe. Um, 
and nearly took on the uh, the British Empire single-handedly. Oh shit! You guys get into melee and help out there. Yeah, our cavalry is really useful. We get a lot of work done with them, but they they do take a lot of casualties. Starrick says he also won more battles than Alexander Great. I thought that was kind of wild. Well, he the nature of warfare at the time it was just constant. Um, I've got like a it's it's a huge tome uh, of um, by oh, Alan Schko, uh, so a biography cool. on Napoleon, and it's just battle after battle after battle, um, which is pretty crazy. But I think it's the nature of the warfare at the time. That war warfare had, you know, it, it's Napoleon in a lot of ways it, uh, is often referred to as as the first modern general. That his his form of warfare was this, the first sort of um, first sort of form of blitzkrieg warfare. This guy's got a little bit of an angle on the us. Men are fatigued, sir. I must rest a Which men are fatigued? You guys get back into and make sure you're not on this. Back into formation. What are we fighting against here? This is the tricky part. They always come back. With Napoleon. Yeah, we've got one guy retreating. Oh, they want to fight it out. Grenadiers will be be able to hold their own in hand-to-hand -hand combat. SHBLOL, the thing about Alexander the Great, um, I don't seem to have lost any battles, which didn't happen to Napoleon. And he also threw out uh, the war rulebook at the time and just changed the way uh, the way the fighting was done. Yeah, Alexander Dr Great's pretty incredible character too. And yeah, like you said, he never lost any battles. Um, another general that's is uh, another famous general that never lost any battles was Scipio Africanus, um, Publius uh, Scipio. Um, who uh, defeated Hannibal? That was pretty amazing. Hand handed Hannibal his only his only defeat. Are we are we just gotta break this unit here. Chase them down, I guess. We can. That should be it. There we go. I don't know what the the restrictions for heroic victory are in this, but we seem to get a lot of heroic victories in uh, in this game. Peacefully occupy. All right, so um, could hit Suez next, but I don't think I want to head towards Cairo. But we want to get some um, want to get some intel first before we head down there. Styrick says nobody thought Hannibal could could be defeated. Yeah, exactly. And you know what? Um, on, until the what is it? Zama. Zama. Hannibal was on undefeated until Zama, but uh, Scipio managed to um, manage to pull it off. But uh, really cool general and really cool story. Um, we don't need all of these guys here. I don't think. Um, let's see here. What well, we're waiting for for artillery for this guy's army. Um, hmm. we got yeah. We definitely don't need all these guys here. What's the situation here? Minus four. And these guys, they can reach over to there. We move out. What's the public order situation? Public order is fine. We move out. So let's move you guys into into Mansuria. 
How's the public order here? Minus one. Can't reach it. But let's bring you over to here. Alright. So far, so good. And then that fixes the public order there for the time being. Yeah, it'll be good to get these uh, these fresh troops. What's the upkeep on the artillery? Let me see, upkeep 177. What's the upkeep for an infantryman? 165, so it's not too much more. Yeah, we've almost got uh, some more artillery recruited. Ooh. Let's uh, we could use some more cavalry. Really, a little bit light on funds right now. Hmm. How big are these forces? Not very big at the moment. Yeah, I think it's heading south as the next um, the next conquest. But it, it would be nice if we could head head um, further east at the same time. That way, we don't get attacked. We've got we've got a, a fair bit of troops. Uh, we're just kind of spread out a little bit at the moment. Uh, just because of injuries and whatnot. Yeah, get those guns out. All right, I think we're we're good to end the turn. I mean, we could cancel some of the road building to recruit some more, some more cavalry, but I don't think that's necessary. Oh, and let's build these farms. That built. All right, nice little. Nice little nest egg or a nice little empire we've sort of put together here so far. Hmm. I was just going to say, we'll probably be seeing the uh, the British here before too long. And la-dee-da, there they are. Just showing up. Hmm. Apart from his exceptional gift for languages, another gift that was to prove decisive in Champollion's success was his extraordinary visual memory, which allowed him to pick out similar signs and groups of signs among the thousands of hieroglyphs he was to study. It may have been this visual memory that caused his initial problems with writing and spelling. As a child, he seemed to have seen words as pictures and pictures as words, making little distinction between writing and drawing. This unconventional and careless approach was probably the result of his early childhood when he tried to teach himself by copying words from books, an indication of the ability of his ability to tackle problems in his own original way. SHBLL says, "How's your economy? Can you afford to have another army?" Um, the economy is good. We're we're, we're um, all this territory that we're taking is. Um, we're making about 3,000 per turn. So, I mean, we've essentially, I don't want to say we have two armies now. Why would they just move two artillery pieces out here? That's so, so bizarre. So bizarre. Um, but it, yeah, we don't have quite enough troops to put together two armies. But it's, I mean, we've got, we've got a decent sized force. Um, what's the, uh, if we move one of you out, does that change? Yeah, uh, we've got to keep you in here. Um, yeah, just, oh shit, no, 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 not you. Shit, didn't mean to do that. Yeah, we've got to keep them there for the public order. Oh, we do also have... We have this to to deal with. I don't know. Yeah, the, it's just a small army, but a nuisance nonetheless. 
How's the public order here? Uh, Clueless says, Vive la France. Clueless, what's up, big guy? Good to see you, man. Isn't it, uh, isn't it past your bedtime? Or is it, uh, are you on summer holidays yet, or what? I guess it's a little bit soon for summer holidays. Alright, the public order is good. Uh, pop you up there. And we'll... Your artillery. This guy, I guess, won't be able to head east. We'll consolidate our territory here. Get rid of, uh, get rid of some of our enemies. SHBLL says, uh, you don't know if it's written there, but during this expedition, they and their army found a pillar. Uh, that helped them translate the Egyptian hieroglyphs, something that could not before. Yeah, I believe it's referred to as the uh, the Rosetta Stone, and it had three languages on there, like the same inscription but with three different languages. Um, I think one of them, one of them obviously being the hieroglyphs, um, the other being Greek, and I'm not sure what the other language was, um, but I believe. Oui? All right, just get you guys all together. Uh, they're still recuperating anyway. Hmm. Would like to get some more cavalry. Oh, these guys are higher rank. So they're getting gain rank pretty quick. Um, yeah, just do some recruitment this turn. Get some more troops in the field. I want to send the the cavalry to do this, but the the cavalry so beat up. Oh, though we got the dragoons. Got the dragoons here. I don't know why they would move this army in there by itself. Seems kind of... Uh... Staric says, the British are coming, the British are coming! <laughs> and Clue says, I am never doing the sleeping. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is where I think the bulk of their forces are. So... Okay, there's... Yeah. We haven't, we haven't taken on an army of that size yet. We're going to have to consolidate our forces up here in the north before... I'm going to make the attack with the Dragoons. I might regret it. Good auto-resolve this one. Yeah, I think we'll auto-resolve this one. Oh, I guess we're getting the reinforcements there too. That's interesting. But yeah, we should probably heal up a little bit before... Before... Um, to put you in there so that they get replenishment. Before we head to Cairo. Within striking range. Plus, we've got the British that we need to sort out first. But yeah, we're just... We're, we're spread a little bit thin, but we're pretty well defended we're pretty dug in uh, let's just hope they don't come over to here but he's within range to get back there and we're recruiting recruiting troops there as well so once we have a big force we'll come down here to Cairo and um, smash it but I think that's gonna be it for this turn In the unfocused freedom of these formative years, with no proper teaching, he developed the wide-ranging curiosity that later provided both the main driving force of his life and a tendency to be distracted by ever more interesting irrelevancies. But the legacy of this unusual childhood was not altogether beneficial. Restricted to the home because of, 
because the social unrest of the revolution made the streets unsafe for children. Champollion at least had the freedom indoors to explore whatever caught his attention. But this later caused problems when he was forced to cope with the dis uh, disciplines of that schoolroom and the necessity to study subjects such as mathematics that completely failed to interest him. It took him many years to learn how to cope with life as an ordinary schoolboy and he never fully adjusted to it simply because he was far from the ordinary. With a keen sense of humor, he increasingly used this his flair for satire and biting, biting wit to defend himself as he strived to survive the rigors of school with friends and family though. He was invariably kind and generous. All right, yeah, I'm not going to start the next paragraph before I uh, actually take the opportunity to turn the light on in here so I can see what I'm reading. Yeah, it looks like there's a lot of them down south there. Um, though the AI, for whatever reason, in these older Total Wars, puts together all kinds of little armies. Um, which is probably why they they phased this out of Total War, that um, each army requires a general in newer Total Wars, because the the AI was never able to quite, um, quite manage it. Yeah, we're going to need a big force to go down south. Oh, let's build the theater here. Um, infrastructure. Let's get the roads going. Probably should have done that sooner. Where did the... Ah, bollocks. I had a feeling that we're going to go over there. Oh, we'll be there. Our troops should be ready just in time to get rid of... Whoa! Yeah, see, this is what I'm talking about. The um, the British, to take their... Um, they're on the island of... Uh, oh, what is that island called? Let me see. Should be able to see it here, actually. Of Cyprus. Yeah, the, the British are on Cyprus. So, um... Yeah, the difficulty with taking Cyprus is avoiding all of this. And seeing as we don't start with a fleet, I mean, we can recruit naval ships here, but taking taking on this uh, this naval force is um, yeah, it's a bit a bit much. But anyway, they don't have much in the line of ground ground troops. Six pound gun, two six pound guns. Hopefully, we get those. Um, Okay, we've got a cavalry here. SHBLL says, Yes, for some reason, in the old Total War games, of the AI really does uh, likes to build a lot of armies of one soldier. Yeah, it's... Um, yeah, I think that's probably... That's the main reason why it got phased out. Because the, um, the AI couldn't quite manage it. But the, the new way of doing it, the AI is a little bit more... I keep you inside the settlement. Can we move you guys out? Alright, good. So we don't need to keep a garrison here anymore. That's good. Um, have you make your way to Napoleon, but come around this way. Take you three out. Are we good? We'll leave those three in there for now. Join forces with Napoleon. Um, oh, we should try and clean up some of these units here. Come out here and see if we can get rid of these guys. Oh, we took a little bit of attrition there. 
just auto this one. And back in the settlement. Mm, I'm not going to run out to catch them. Could be a trap. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it would be nice to we could push and take out the Mamluks in this area, but the only problem is it's we're, we're already at war with the Ottoman Empire that will give us a border with them, which we don't want. So, may, might just have to keep um, this area sort of defended a little bit. Alright, um, what's, what's the situation here? If we take you guys out. Mm. Damn. What's, what do you got for construction here? Do you have the theater? How much cash do we have? The school of Poetry sounds good. Sounds lovely. Sounds lovely. Yeah, it looks like it's the one big army, one tiny army, and then the rest are all just one one unit. How are we looking for... how is Napoleon's army looking? You know what, next turn we'll send back... we'll send back our injured units to this settlement and take the, uh, the units that aren't injured so much. Yeah, send back the, because these guys are all healed up. We'll send back all the injured units to, to occupy these and then we'll take the, uh, the fresh units and then we'll head south. Um, Yeah, we've got the British to deal with. Moving on. Shit, I should have checked if we, there was something else that we could build there. Man, I would love to see this. Um, I would love to see like a, a, a modern version of this game because, you know, coastal battles with, with, uh, with navies and huge fortresses would be freaking epic. Um, all right let's read some more about champollion all right the violent mood swings and tantrums born of the frustrations of champollion's early school days gradually gave way to grudging tolerance of lessons that were incomprehensible or numbingly repetitive and of teachers who were more prov provocative than inspiring as he tried ever harder to suppress his outrage at injustice and disguise his boredom. What he did not hide was an ability and a passion for those subjects, which did interest him. Initially, an amusement, drawing was a skill, and he continued to develop and would become essential in his study of hieroglyphs, and botany was an enthusiasm that never entirely left him, but to his aptitude and obsession for languages was added an increasing immersion in ancient history. As his education progressed, it was the work done in his spare time that began to display the developing skills that would be so important for his study of hieroglyphs. Once committed to a project, Champollion was capable of the most meticulous study, patiently and painstakingly examining and assessing all available sources of evidence. He had a passion for listing, classifying and analyzing the accumulated material before using strictly, strictly logical reasoning to produce his results. Above all, he was stubborn. He might be forced to leave off a project or stop altogether. He might be sidetracked or hindered a hundred times, but he never gave up. He also had the courage and independence to approach problems with an open mind, born and brought up in the time of the French Revolution. 
when religion had been officially abolished and actively suppressed. His education was nevertheless often in the hands of men who were devout Catholics, many of them priests and monks before the revolution, enabling him to develop flexibility of thought that was to prove crucial in understanding hieroglyphs. All right, where were we? All right, we've got some uh, some British scum here. And we've got, you know, we've got the beginnings of a second army here. We've got uh, definitely the beginning. Maybe while we send Napoleon south, this army can head east, perhaps. Um, Mm. All right, what are we up against? First Regiment of Foot. Our first conflict with the British. The British Empire. Um, 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 yeah, these sand dunes make it tricky for deployment of the guns. It's a little bit hilly here. Derek says, first of many to come, I'm sure. I hope not. And <laughs> SHBLL says, uh, throw the redcoats back into the sea. That is the plan. That is the plan. Actually, we're going to cut them down before they can get the chance to get back into the sea. God damn, I can't decide where to deploy here. I think we're going to deploy on this side. Stretch you out when at the battle. Cavalry. I don't know if I should keep you all together or what. I don't know where they're going to deploy. guns yeah it's just a small force thank goodness but it'll once we get rid of once we get rid of them um, once we get rid of the red coats here uh, it should be a while before we see them again boys quickly oh man that unit's getting obliterated come on go 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 Probably just charge into them. Artillery. We 
get over here. Gotta be careful of that unit. Shit, how do we lose so many? Let's be friendly fire. Get in range here. Let's take out the general. Yeah, I don't want to charge them in and get the attention of these guys. I want them to stay in, in, in range of our guns. I don't want them to turn around. We have killed their general. All right, good stuff. Now they must break. Are they turning around? They're not turning around. The red coats. Other, the cavalry's on the move. <laughs> Trying to escape. Run, run. <laughs> Love the explosions and stuff in this game. But yeah, like I was saying, man. The, the job that they could do for a Napoleon Total War nowadays would be freaking awesome. Alright, let's get in there and finish them off. And then that'll be it for the cow. I can't believe we took that much damage on the one unit. But, yeah, the cavalry, they're extremely useful. But, uh... They can be a little bit squishy at times, and especially, especially when friendly fire. God dang it! Oh, glorious! Starik says, "Trying to run away, you might want to drop your cannons." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know if they were running away or trying to get into better position, but we uh, took care of them nonetheless. These guys pursuing? Oh, they're pursuing the... God damn it. Uh, cavalry, I don't want involved in any more of the fighting. I'm tempted to pull them off the field. But we don't need to do that. Come out of here. Oh, they're still, they're still at it. Take them out. Take them out, boys. Alright, let's learn some more about Champollion. So, where his rivals tended to be factional and polarized, for, for or against the church, for or against Napoleon, and equally rigid in their intellectual theories, Champollion weighed the evidence and drew his own conclusions. This approach was both a blessing and a curse. Applied to academic problems, it was essential, 
but in time of political upheaval it could prove, prove fatal. Initially, a critic of Napoleon, Champollion became a fervent supporter in the weeks before Napoleon's final abdication, an unfortunate decision that brought him under immediate suspicion from the restored monarchy and lifelong hatred and opposition from many royalists. SHBLL says, to their credit, they don't give up. Yeah, the, the artillery guys. Uh, freaking hilarious. Let's see if we can get a better view here. Steric says, I love the buffs of gunpowder all over the place. Yeah, man, it's, uh, you know, like, aesthetically, like, the game has, has held up to, you know, it still looks pretty good. Um, you know... The, the little touches that they've added to it I, I'm just you know I, I'd love to see what they could do with this in um, you know in a modern like the way this the gunpowder comes off the guns the soldiers kick up dirt and stuff when they're walking like it's it's all pretty freaking uh, pretty freaking good all right start shooting at this guy here The final element of Champollion's success was the availability of material. The number of hieroglyphs that previous scholars had at their disposal was severely limited, being mainly derived from Egyptian monuments and artifacts that had been imported into Europe long ago. Because Egypt had been closed to outsiders for centuries, attempts to decipher hieroglyphs had ground to a halt as insufficient source material made the task impossible. Yet even as Champollion was t attending his first formal lessons, Napoleon was conducting a momentous military campaign in Egypt that would eventually bring all things Egyptian to the notice of Western Europeans and especially the French. Napoleon's campaign in Egypt failed in its military objectives, but the savants accompanying the expedition took back to France a mass of notes, drawings, and artifacts, artifacts that were to amaze the scholars of Europe and the soldiers who survived the campaign returned with stories of an exotic land of stark contrasts, stories that would have been in, enlarged and embellished each time they were told. From Napoleon himself down to the lowest ranks of conscripts, everyone who had taken part in the Egypt, Egypt, Egypt expedition was deeply affected by the experience and a, fascinated, uh, and a fascination for Egypt. In effect, a new, newly discovered country spread throughout France, creating a wave of Egyptomania. Over the following decades, the Egypt, Egyptomania faded, but the French affinity for Egypt, the colony France never had, has continued to the present day. Steric says, yeah, I agree. I would love to see what they could do with a game like this now. Yeah, it would be, um, it would be pretty wild, I think. But uh, the game I'm hoping for, like, what I'd really like to see for the next historical title is Total War Renaissance. Um, One of our units has used all its ammunition, sir. Put way too much damage on my cavalry here in this battle. Oh, and they got into square formation, too. God dang it. Let's get up. Oh, they broke. I think that should be it. What are we waiting for here? There we go. Another heroic victory. The heroics continue. But yeah, Total War Renaissance, I feel like, would be a nice, you know, combination of, if you were to take, like, Empire Total War and Medieval Total War and, and, and made something, like, in between those, uh, you know, you'd get a little bit of Medieval aspects, but you'd also get a little bit of the gunpowder and the Age of Sail, a little bit of those a aspects as well. That's what I'd really like to see. SHBLL says, uh, you mean the Italian Wars? No, just like that time period, the Renaissance, like around like the 1600s, like say, I don't know, let's say like the 1500s to to uh, the late 1600s. That's what I would uh, dig for a new Total War. But yeah, the, the city-states, the battles, the, the city-states would, would definitely be a part of it. All right, what did we say we we're going to do this term? We're going to send all the injured troops... 
god, which is a lot of them. Back this way. Ah, oh, shit. Back to there. Hmm. I want to get you guys over here as quickly as possible. Though that's not going to be a big enough force for us to make the attack, I don't think. SHBLOL says, I think it would be cool if they did a 30 year war game. Yeah, you know what? Um, that wouldn't be bad either. Ooh, what do we got here? What do we got? We got invading forces, so. Alright, you guys stay put where you are. The invasion is on. Uh, what are we recruiting? I think we need some more foot soldiers. Since we're having trouble here. Holding all this territory. Staric says, honestly, I still want to see Medieval 3. I My guess is that's that would be my best guess, what they're working on right now. And probably with a Medieval 3, I'd get a little bit of that Total War Renaissance anyway. The, sort of the late period Medieval. Uh, we're not strong enough to make the attack now. Good God, look at them all down here. God, what a mess. Yeah, we were we were making good time, but now we're kind of um, we're just sort of cons consolidating some territory and getting our forces repaired. Ooh man, that's a big army. Maybe we'll need both these forces. Take that on. They've really stacked up Cairo. I kind of regret not taking Cairo earlier. Ooh, they could hit us. They could attack us too. Shit. That's not good. Sit outside the settlement. More troops coming down. Alright, we've got... Looks like we've got a uh, a big battle brewing here, at some point, some point soon. Shit, though. Uh. We've got public order problems too. Uh, public order still. There we go, that should do it. Alright, that balances it, but... Still, alright, yeah, we've got, uh, we've got some major conflict brewing here between us and the Mamelukes. Turning out to be a little bit of, um, a little bit of a pain in the ass. We'll have to keep a small garrison here to fend off these these troops but the bulk of their Cairo once we take Cairo I feel like things should start moving in our direction a little bit faster but with the British there we had like a little bit of a um, little bit of a diversion all right more of the keys to Egypt by the time Champollion arrived in Paris in 1807, the city was home to the most brilliant linguistic scholars in Europe. It also possessed a mass of exciting but as yet barely studied material just brought back from Egypt by Napoleon's expedition. 
The libraries were choked with precious books and manuscripts that had been looted from all over Europe by Napoleon's armies. The attempt to decipher hieroglyphs, which Champollion had already begun, soon developed into a race between himself and his rivals, a strange race run in darkness, where each competitor was often unknown to the others until he chose to reveal publicly what strides he had made. Scholars from all over the continent began to study hieroglyphs, with many concentrating on the inscriptions of the newly uh, discovered Rosetta Stone, whose three texts held out the hope that the hieroglyphic text would be matched with the Greek text to provide a key to translation. As more and more people joined in, the serious competition resolved itself into a duel between two men, and in a curious reflection of the politics of the time, one was French and one was English, Jean-Francois Champollion and Thomas Young. The competition was open and anyone could try his hand at decipher decipherment, but there was no formal race, no prize was offered, no money, no battles above all, there were no rules. Yet each would be deciphered, decipher fully understood what he was striving for, a place in history, a reputation as the one who liberated, liberated ancient Egypt from the ignorance and obscurity that had come to surround it, the immortal acclaim due to the man who first deciphered the hieroglyphs. What the shit? No, I'm not going to surrender. Oh, boy. All right, we'll just uh, auto-resolve this. We'll be able to retake this with our... Uh, settlement was that? Goddamn, they, they've, got, they've got army spam all over the place. Like, look at this. It's uh, quite, quite something. Get rid of this one. Stark says, ha ha, give up now. Yeah, I never, I was never a big fan of the, um, I mean, it's great when, you know, you can demand the surrender of the, uh, of the AI, but, um, but yeah, it doesn't make sense when, when you're playing, like, why would you ever surrender? You want to at least do a little bit of damage to them. Stark says, we're up. give up now or I'll be forced to ask you again. Hello. God, they're just all over the place. Alright, back in there. And we got some reinforcements. Yeah, we're replenishing really slow here, but we're... Pretty... A sizable army there. Bollocks. I think he's got enough movement to reach there. I think he's just out of range, but we might be able to initiate the attack with one of these guys. Yeah, just out of range, but I have an idea of what we could do. He should be, yeah, he's got enough movement to make the, what? Why the hell can't he make the attack? There we go. There we go. Um, hmm. We could demand them surrender, but then then this we would catch this army. I'm kind of leaning towards auto resolving this one because we we're we're not gonna have these these guys set up on the field. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. And it's not too bad. Monsieur, 
and pop you there. Just so that they get some replenishment. So, hmm, might want to consider merging some of these units. Let's send back most damaged guys. And that should be good. Yeah, once these guys are back to full strength. Alright, there we go. Alright, crisis averted. And we'll have these two forces combine against this. And that should be enough to be able to uh, to take it. So we'll have to reorganize the armies a little bit when we get down here to Cairo. And we do have reinforcements being recruited as we speak. So, so we're not getting not getting much uh, much in the way of building done. Oh, we got another dude. What can we research here? Um, industrial division of labor under research. What are the uh, minus two happiness lower cost as increases recruitment slots in your home region? No. Enables cavalry diamond formation. Enables line infantry fire advanced drill. Minus five percent upkeep for all your units plus five per turn wealth all your regions. Oh, that sounds pretty good. Let's go with that one. What does this one do? Plus three percent wealth all logistics. Ooh, logistics would be good. 2% replenishment plus 5% campaign movement range. Let's go with that and then we'll maybe national debt. Yeah, we're getting, these guys are pretty close to Probably bring the Chaucers down as well. Yeah, public order's fine there. Zagazig, the public order's not great. Surrounded by by these guys. Assassinate, sabotage, infiltrate, chance of success. I wonder what happens if they infiltrate. Agent executed. Oh my gosh. Your agent was detected whilst acting covertly in your on your instructions. He has been captured, tortured, and executed. Good god, the poor bastard. Oh my goodness gracious. Damn it, I uh, I liked having a spy. I guess that's what I get for giving him something to do down there. We'll avenge him when we take Cairo. I don't know what these guys are planning out here, but we're going to have to leave a garrison behind here. All right, we're good. All right, chapter two, or sorry, chapter one, <laughs> the land of Egypt. That was just the uh, the introduction. Josephine never did see Egypt. She begged Napoleon to take her with him, but for once he was undecided. He knew that his expedition to Egypt was a gamble. If the French fleet, laden with troops, supplies, and armaments, was caught by the British Navy, there would be little chance to fight or flee. Had Josephine accompanied Napoleon, she would have been one of the first Western women to see Egypt in more than a thousand years, because conditions were so dangerous that travel up the Nile was only for the fearless, the foolish, or the suicidal. Agent recruited. Okay. This man has been recruited by your nation as an agent. He is available for immediate assignment. A spy... He's also a saboteur and assassin who can be sent to target city to report contents of sabotage buildings to attempt an assassination. Select target character. Enemy raid. 
All right, where's my new agent? I don't see it. That's weird. Those are both scholars. I don't know, that's weird. It says we recruited an agent, but I don't see him. Yeah, they raided this parrot. Where's the army here? Let's move you right to here. We can make the attack on Cairo next turn. Hmm. Let me bring this cavalry. Let the Did you guys get into the army there. Let's head over that direction. You guys head that direction as well. Government, we're not making a lot. Probably lay off the recruitment for a little bit. Alright, we've got lots of fresh... Oh, there's our agent. Found him. Get down here and give me an idea. We'll make the attack on Cairo next turn, I think. But let's just mop up this a little bit. So bizarre. But I guess you can never... Oh, we got farms out here. We'll build those. What's the minus three? Um, who should we leave behind? Give our line infantry. Is that... Minus one. Why is the public order so good here? Hmm, that's interesting. All right. All right, we'll link up with our other army here. And between the two armies, we should be... We'll put all the artillery... Uh, should we put all the artillery in one army? Yeah. Yeah, this force should be should be sufficient. And then we've got plenty of reinforcements. We'll send the reinforcements down. But I think... Alright, I think this looks pretty good. Uh, unfortunately, the Grenadiers aren't getting replenishment this turn. We didn't have quite enough movement to get in there. Yeah, let's build up some of these uh, some of these farms. Should be pretty well protected there. And help the help our econ economy a little bit. All right, bit overdue. Late November, seventeen ninety-eight. Yeah. I've feel like we've we've slowed down well we have slowed down obviously but i always get worried about these these campaigns where you have a limited amount of time all right the land of egypt on 19th of may 1798 
General Napoleon gave orders for the French fleet to set sail, finally deciding not to take his wife Josephine, but to send her uh, send for her once his expedition, expedition had successfully evaded the British. He had, in fact, given orders that no woman, no women, other than the few officially authorized ones, such as laundresses and seamstresses, were to travel with the expedition. But it was not unusual for women to accompany their husbands and lovers on military campaigns, and in the event of Napoleon's orders, were not strictly observed. Some wives of officers traveled with them openly, while other women stowed away on the ships or were disguised as men. In all, about 300 women sailed to Egypt. Workers on strike, what the hell? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Alright, you guys, stay put there. Get uh, replenished, and they'll be, um, be there to protect this flank. And we've got a couple of units here protecting. Um, we can actually probably send these guys over there as well. And you know what? I think why don't we we'll have a general stay behind with them as well. We don't need we don't need an extra general down here. Two generals should be enough to get the job done. The settlement doesn't need a garrison. The public order is so good. Let's build the magistrate there. Yeah, you guys stay put. All right. Um, oh, what do we got here? How big is this force? Alright, we'll have Napoleon make the attack. Nine pound, nine pound artillery. I guess their infantry is just way worse than ours because. But let's uh, organize the armies a little bit. Uh, what do we got? Um... All right, that looks pretty good. Je ne peux pas le faire. Les porcs pourrissent dans leur porcherie. Lots of artillery pieces to take out. I think about Napoleon is usually he gets to deploy second, which gives you the uh, gives us the opportunity to um, see where our where the enemy is deployed. Hmm. Pretty 
good. There. I'm just trying to reorganize it so that I'll put you guys in front of the guns for a change. But because we're on a slope, yeah, should be they should be safe. <laughs> Famous last words. Should be okay. Now the cavalry. Only stand back here and cav. You guys stand right here. Get around there. Let's bring it down a little bit more. Cross a bit. Uh, yeah, the balance of power is actually pretty close. You don't have their guns probably count for quite a bit. What do we got over here? Come on, go. Shit! Come on, go, go, go. Man, I I don't know what is up with my double click, but I remember the last time playing this that I was getting incredibly frustrated with the uh, the double click. Shit, their artillery is pretty dug in there. Gotta take these guys out. Artillery. artillery on the other side shouldn't be too much of a factor who's loaded up on this in this corner. That volley of gunshots did quite a bit of damage there, so hopefully oh shit. Come on, finish these guys off and then we'll pull out. Hello. I want to stay away from their infantry. Can okay, see if we can get in behind. Ah, fuck. That looks like looks like there's artillery's on the move. Just hold up. The artillery pick their own targets for now. Oh, pull back.
Alright, you should be able to get in there. They have strategically placed their artillery behind these buildings. Just waiting to see if they activate this unit while we clear out the artillery over here. Right. Good. And start heading over, take out the next bit of artillery. Yeah, just stay away from them. Fuck. All right, I feel pretty confident. Our line infantry can hold against them here on the ridge. Lot of troops pushing up this hill. Our men are running, sir. What the hell? You freaking cowards, get back here. Come on, quickly, quickly. Shoot, I didn't check where our reinforcements are coming in from. Should be just right behind us. But you never know. Don't let them get another volley off. Come on, get in there. Good job. Look at the smoke. Yeah, our troops are much better quality. So, the last campaign I went with quantity, and this campaign I decided quality is the way to go. The, I don't think they're, the line infantry should be just about the best that, uh, oh shit. Let's bring the cav over to help out. Actually, we might want to, let's actually withdraw the cav and see if we can get some reinforcements on the field. In general, glorious victory, sir, is soon to be yours. Take a look at some of the fighting here. Oh, so much for that. Yeah, we're just much better armed than they are. Over here, though, they're overwhelming. But Shoot down at them. Get in there and help him. All 
Alright, we've got some reinforcements coming on the field. Our men are running, sir. That's okay. You guys just move forward, don't let them over here. Just getting into formation. These dragoons would be useful right about now. Cleaning this up, clearing this up. That should just about be it. Whew! Smoldering battlefield. Took a bit of damage, but I mean, this is their biggest force that they've got out there. Another heroic victory. Oh, look at that. Breaking the Mameluk resistance. Cairo, sir, second largest city in the Ottoman Empire, home of. To some of Islam's finest scholars, its University of Al Azhar is as famous in the East as the University of Paris in France. It is quite the achievement to have conquered a city of such historic importance. Save your, save, savor it well. Oh, workers on strike. I, we will peacefully occupy, and I'm gonna drop a save here because I think this is. Um, I think this is a good place to stop for today um i've been away from streaming for a little while so it's going to take me take me a bit to get back into my streaming uh streaming mojo but uh this is definitely a good start nice should be a nice short campaign let's take a look at the victory objectives how close we are to uh so we've got seven out of ten um but uh, we still need these cities as well but i'm Chant the the plan is to go all the way south and occupy all of that territory so um, I don't know if we're gonna go all the way to the Red Sea but we shall see definitely coming down south and we'll, we'll have to take this because I think we end up um, you'll end up getting um, incursions from there if you don't but definitely a good start we've got the, um, the Delta the Nile Delta pretty much conquered we just had the Battle of the Pyramids, and we will uh, we'll continue this tomorrow. I'll be playing this all week, I think. So, everyone, have a great day. Everybody who stopped by, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. And uh, I will see you all again soon. Ragnarok uh, signing out.